Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to the next episode in the series here where we've just continued to make progress uh, or at least continued to round out our understanding of how this navigation architecture uh, components, sorry, this navigation components library works from uh, Google. So if you've missed any of that, if this looks uh, completely foreign to you, go ahead and just catch up on the few episodes before this one. Uh, and if you are returning from a previous episode, uh, thanks for jumping back into it. I'm excited to continue to deliver more content here. So um, I actually just want to pause really quick to take a look at uh, Git real fast. I know that we have had um, It was hiding over there. I don't know why. My commit is normally down there. So anyway, um, we have uh, been doing a whole bunch, as you can see here. We've modified 13 files. It's now been probably, what is this, episode 4 or 5 or something like that. So uh, we've done a handful of stuff here, and, and I would just like to kind of, uh, again, keep Git in the, in the rhythm here and uh, not skip a beat. So, uh, you know, I want to see you guys all or have all you see this uh, happening live and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and say something simple like furthered project creation and set up navgraph uh, actions and arguments for now. Let me go ahead and instead of commit, we're oh. I click the wrong thing. And I click cancel real quick. Instead of commit, I'm going to click the little arrow. I'm going to commit and push. And so we can just do this all in one motion. Push it up there. And perfect. Once it's done, we can take a little look at. Uh, do, 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 do. We can see it here now. Nope. And once we refresh this page, we can now see that, uh, you know. We have uh, 16 seconds ago, two commits now, and, and we have our uh, commit message there for the affected files. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and make a little bit of progress here. So we've created a lot of stuff in XML, and we haven't really done too much in code here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and actually take this code here and pop this into our um, activity class. right? because our activity main file is the one that has this container view. Again, this activity is going to hold all of our, uh, all of our uh, fragments that we're going to be using here. So if we just paste this code in here, we kind of uh, option enter to import things, and I change this to be nav host fragment, uh, we're all good here. So we're able to once this creates, so we set the view, we're able to get our nav host fragment via the support fragment manager, uh, and then we're able to cast it to the correct type. And then what we actually really care about is what's called the nav controller. And so at this point, the nav controller is, uh, I guess, the, the bread and butter, like the, the important the most important part of this uh, system that we're going to interact with because there are functions in the nav controller as you can see here navigate that have you know a particular ID associated with them an entire nav directions object which are those directions uh, that were generated for us uh, when we define actions and when we define um, arguments to like the destination file um, and then there's just, you know, a whole bunch of other, um, I guess, ways to communicate to the system that we want to move forward. And then there's also the navigate up, which is going to actually um, migrate us backwards, you know, basically simulate clicking the back button or something along those lines. So uh, there's just simple ways to kind of, you know, pop the stack and those kinds of things. They have here uh, a way to get the current destination. And then this is actually pretty useful. We might get into this at some point, adding a destination change listener. So the fragment is going to be kind of driving the boat to say, hey, nav controller, that's at the activity level, um, you know, navigate to this or navigate with this information. And uh, the navigation, des the destination change listener will actually get fired 
um, when a particular um, when a particular uh, navigation has taken place. So you can see here callback for when there's a, a change here and you can see you get the controller, you get the destination and then you get the arguments. So you know if you kind of just want to we'll get into some simple use cases for it but it's definitely going to be um, useful but the point is is that this nav controller is really the stuff that we care about here um, how we're actually going to you know use the um, use this system if you will so we're going to actually kind of store this at a, uh, a, a global site so that um, our fragments are going to have a way to interact with this uh, the nav controller here. And so actually this is a pretty good example of stuff that we've used before. Uh, we're going to create a base main. No, you know what? We're just going to call it base fragment. We're only going to have one activity. Um, so we're going to call this fragment or base fragment, excuse me, and we're going to make this abstract. And then what we're going to say is protected val uh, nav controller by lazy. And I forgot the T. Okay. Um, activity as our main activity dot nav controller. So the beauty of doing things this way is now our home fragment that used to just be a fragment is going to actually be a base fragment. And by doing that, when we are within, you know, on view created or on resume or somewhere, we can actually just reference the field nav controller. And we can say, you know, nav controller dot, let's say navigate up because they clicked a button that is supposed to bring them backwards in the flow. Now this nav controller sits at the base fragment level and it actually is connected to uh, fetching basically our activity, casting it to a main activity, and referencing its nav controller. So you can kind of see that instead of you know home fragment, we would have to do this everywhere we wanted to reference a nav controller in every single fragment. We would either have to have a global variable that does exactly this, or we would have to be running this code everywhere. So it's like no, you know, we we can utilize inheritance to our advantage here. Um, and this is a fantastic example of it in every single project, professional or personal, I have this exact line of code uh, running. So it just makes life a lot easier. It makes a lot of sense. It's a very good use case to showcase um, you know, how we can communicate things within the system and how we can share them. And uh, you know, we're all good here. The next thing that we need to do here is uh, we actually need to create the view for our fragments here. Um, we don't have the luxury of setting our content view in the on create. That's only applies to activities. So if you remember for particular fragments, we actually need to uh, override this function called on create view and we need to return a particular view and it gives us a little bit of information here. So we can, or uh, a couple tools to do that. So we're going to call inflator uh, dot inflate r dot layout I need to import the r uh, fragment home container false right I mean this is basically going to be boilerplate code that we need to put in um, every single fragment and so we're invoking this uh, inflate function where we have given it the resource the view group which is the container and then attached to root we just do false so then at this point um, so you know this active this lifecycle callback will happen first and then this um, callback will uh, happen after the view has been created and so it's at this point safe to uh, reference our recycler view and that kind of stuff so we can go ahead and grab a reference to uh, to that view by calling uh, 
by doing this, um, we've defined a variable called recycler view. It is of type recycler view, and we're setting that equal to the view that was passed in, which is the inflated version of this layout. Find that view by ID, r.id recycler view, and you can see here in our layout file, the recycler view is called recycler view. So this is outdated. This is old. This is the way that I showed you how to do things in the beginning because I wanted to um, impart, <laughs> go back to my roots, and also uh, yeah, may, maybe you need to do this every now and then, uh, at least doing things this way, with, this way with the find view by ID. But you noticed when I was typing things, I actually kind of tripped up. It gave me this little thing here because it didn't know what type it was. So I was going to have to write recycle review there. But then I decided to declare it over here instead. Um, but no, this is kind of a similar issue that we would run into when it comes to um, you know the, the fragment arguments that we were passing in, where you have to have them be type safe, make sure it's a string when you put it into the bundle, make sure it's a string when you pull it out of the bundle, and then uh, safe args, that plugin that we, that we covered in the last episode, came by, kind of revamped that and said, no, 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 we can actually do things in a type safe manner, so we don't need to have this guessing game or run into these un, uh, uncalled for errors and stuff like that. So actually, um, we have something called view binding. And so, Again, this is part of our Android Jetpack, which everything has, um, uh, at least everything in this season, uh, comes from. And so you can see here, in most cases, view binding replaces find view by ID. So there's a little bit of an instruction here um, to, to set things up, but it's pretty straightforward here. So we're going to go ahead and modify our build.gradle file. We're going to go ahead and find our Android attribute uh, or block um, which exists right here and I usually just put it at the bottom here uh, build features view binding true we're gonna sync now let me make sure that I'm not missing anything else ba, 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 ba. Nope. okay wonderful so that is everything that was actually a little easier than I was expecting so I'm going to go ahead and write some code on the screen here, and we will talk about it in a second. What we've done here is actually create some variables in place for our, uh, our, our, our view binding, um, I guess, usage, if you will. So we've actually gone ahead and created a private variable that has this little underscore, the word binding. It is of type fragment home binding, and we're setting that equal to null. Um, and then we're actually gonna go ahead and create another variable here that's called binding, and we're setting the get function. So every time we reference this, um, this field, we're gonna uh, run this code, which is going to look at this variable and declare it as non-null. And so the, the reason that we need to uh, actually have this kind of dual approach, I think they outline it here. Da, 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 da. Yes. Um, so you can see here they kind of do something similar, right? So you have uh, your, your internal binding uh, object set to nullable, and then you set the uh, regular binding uh, set to non-null and it says here this property is only valid, be valid between on create view and on destroy view and you can see here a little bit of the code that they actually implement. So it looks pretty similar in this um, uh, the, the on create view function but in the on destroy view we're actually setting it um, back to null and so that's actually has to do with to prevent memory leaks uh, because the uh, because of the lifecycle callbacks and the way that the uh, how long the fragment can live in the system and and the views not being properly released when they're off the screen, we need to null out um, this field when we're actually setting it in the on create view. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say binding uh, equals fragment home binding. There's an inflate function on there. And it basically works well with um, what has been passed in here. You see the inflator and the container. So uh, all that is good and well. And then 
binding.root. We cannot forget in the on destroy view to set it to null. And then in here, instead of doing this nonsense, when we want to reference uh, part of the, the, the UI layer, we can say recycle review equals binding or recycle review. Boom. Done. Seems like this might be um, not that big of a deal, but, but it actually is. It really does help reduce uh, how many keystrokes you actually need to. It forces you into this pattern of being a little conscious of memory, being a little conscious of how long the fragment uh, life cycle actually is and understanding that it should release its views when it's done with it So in the creation process when we're setting this internal binding field to be something um, We also just need to null that out in the respective Callback life cycle callback when the fragment is being destroyed and so with this approach here Just remove this with this approach here. You will have um you know, kind of a, a, a very updated approach to how to reference the UI within um, within the fragment. And the good news is that this binding field is actually set to the uh, at a global level for the fragment. So you can actually uh, reference this the UI in different functions that you end up creating, not just on view created. So if you know you you have some function that needs to modify the UI. You don't need to now pass that UI element into the function as a parameter. You have a way to actually gather the uh, or reference the UI at any point in this code because of the um, the global scope that this that this variable now has. So uh, the last thing that I will say on the idea of view binding is that view binding works based off of your layout files and the way that they are named. So if we actually look at the name of this file here, fragment home, this was generated to be fragment home binding. So the way that these view binding fields are created or uh, files are created is actually the name of your uh, XML file. They remove any of these uh, underscores and put in title case here and then they just throw the word binding at the end of it. Um, it has, as I mentioned here, the inflate function, which is kind of extracted away from you. And you know, when you command click into things, it just brings you to the um, just brings you to the layout file that's associated with it. Uh, so there's a little bit of magic that's going on under the hood, but this is um, this along with eventually maybe getting into data binding uh, is kind of the standard approach now at this point to move forward, reference your UI, and actually build things at the fragment level. And so you can actually do this at the activity level as well. Uh, it's not just something that's meant to be uh, used at the fragment level. You can use it inside view holders as well, which we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, but just know that it is uh, the way that we want to go. The stuff that we will be proceeding with at this point going forward will be this understanding of view binding, uh, and it's just good practice to kind of get rid of that classic find view by ID and and move on from there. There are, however, certain um, use cases where find view by ID is still going to be the way that you want to go. Um, so just it's good to know that that tool is available to you, but you know, for all intents and purposes, the view binding is going to cover the vast majority of your use cases where you're trying to reference your UI from your code. So uh, we will continue with this and uh, just definitely don't forget to know this up because you might run into memory leaks and we would just like to avoid that as much as possible. So thanks for sticking with me again. I, uh, I'm sorry to constantly be introducing things to you, but hopefully you can see uh, that there's value in it and you can see how that we're progressing forward and especially because you had the understanding of you know what was going on under the hood as far as find view by ID and that stuff this is just a new way of, um, of, of utilizing that and removing all of that monotonous code from the developer yourself so thanks for tuning in I will catch you in the next one where we are just going to continue building out this app